You know I'm totally off script right now. And this is how I got elected, by being off script. President Trump spoke at CPAC this weekend off script per his usual style and it was explosive. This is the best that he's looked in a while. His approval rating is continuing to climb. We will go over the most important parts of his speech, what they mean for the future, so stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, pals and gals. Welcome, as always, to Hack Off Kami. You will never not be welcome, unless, of course, you are a commie, in which case I would ask you to revisit the name of the program that you are watching. But CPAC was this weekend, a conservative political action conference, for those of you not familiar, and it was filled with notable pundits and politicians and a superfluous amount of sycophants. A superfluous supply of sycophants, he said, employing sibilance. My English teachers would be proud. Shout out to Miss, I'm not gonna say her name, but that's all of DC. It's not just CPAC. DC is just filled with yes men. But so the highlight, of course, was President Trump's speech. It went on for about two hours, which is fine because time flies when we're having fun. So we're gonna break down the five most significant parts of the speech in no particular order of importance. The Green New Deal, right? Green New Deal. I encourage it. I think, the, I think it's really something that they should promote. They should work hard on. It's something our country needs. Desperately, they have to go out and get it. But I'll take the other side of that argument only because I'm mandated to. I'm mandated. But they should stay with that argument. Never change. Never change. The first thing to note is that no one that the Democrats will bring to the debate stage will ever have Trump's crowd skills. It won't even be comparable. Oh, Bernie Sanders fills venues with screaming supporters. Yeah. He's selling a different product. He's selling dependence. He's selling entitlements. Of course, that's going to draw people, not independents who have benefited from the Trump economy, but some people, people with artificially tinted hair, let's say. This whole thing, this entire CPAC speech, it was all setting up for 2020. And he has this thing where instead of bringing up the Green New Deal and talking about what a disaster it'll be, he just mocks it. He has a sarcastic, ironic support for it. He's telling Democrats, oh yeah, stick to that. And this is important. Because had he torn it to shreds, the media would have said, Trump lies about the Green New Deal. The Democrats would have said, oh, don't listen to Trump. Trump's lying to you about the Green New Deal. And the public would hear that and they'd just ignore whatever he said. But Trump instead effectively dares them to continue down the path. He already knows how disastrous it is. But more importantly, he knows that they know how disastrous it is and that the American people also know how disastrous it is. So Trump is trying to checkmate them here. And Republican congressmen have been working towards this too, trying to get Democrats to vote and go on record with whether or not they support this. 90 trillion economic jump starter. I mean, they said it'll jump start the, is our economy broken? Are we not soaring? Are we poor? We don't need your Keynesian economics. It doesn't work. Young John Doyle, junior year AP econ being taught Keynesian economics. Still avoided the brainwashing, but they must teach it differently at BU. No, Alexandria, don't just break one window to stimulate the economy. Tear down or upgrade literally every building within 10 years. That's, that's a lot better. Uh, this Green New Deal. I mean, I get it. She's young. She wants to make a name for herself. That's all this really could be at this point. I mean, it stopped being viable a few dozen trillion dollars ago, but it's going to be one of the Democrat Party's biggest gifts to Trump. And who knows? Maybe this is just, you know, 4D chess playing out. QAnon. Maybe, maybe Trump saw her bartending and told her he was running for president in 2016 and needed her to come and just propose something so ridiculous that the Democrats would have to jump on board and implode as a result. I don't know. But still with 2020, he had some very nice things to say about Vice President Pence, whose signature is on my MAGA hat. Um, and that's great to hear because there were rumors a few months ago that they were going to replace Pence in 2020, maybe with Nikki Haley. And that would not have been good. And Trump didn't want to do that. He didn't want that to happen. So it's good that there's still a team. They have the same unification that they did in 2016. And he also went after Elizabeth Warren. He said that he was upset with himself for using Pocahontas too early. He wishes that he had saved it for if and when she became the nominee so that he could destroy her at that point since he's already destroyed her career. I mean, she's averaging like fourth in the polls with 7%. As I predicted, not a chance for Pocahontas at this point. So now we're waiting for a report and we'll find out whether or not and who we're dealing with. We're waiting for a report by people that weren't elected. You put the wrong people in a couple of positions and they leave people for a long time that shouldn't be there. And all of a sudden, they're trying to take you out with bull okay? With bull he calls out the Mueller investigation. He calls it what it is. It's bull 
and this is important because he's always had this approach of just dismissing it, which is good because because it's so asinine to even acknowledge it would be to validate its legitimacy even to just a slight degree. So he's smart to just brush it off as stupid, which it is. And I mean, this whole thing was started because Trump and Russia supposedly colluded and everyone knew from the beginning and everyone knew from the beginning it was stupid. I mean, we'll spend 25 million in two years on it, but it's funny because they'll say, well, the investigation paid for itself because of how much tax revenue it found people cheating out of. It's like, okay, You've got the low information Democrat voter. They see Trump, Russia. They think collusion. And then they see indictments made, Trump, Russia. And they're like, I knew it. But it's for tax fraud, really? That's your puppeteering from Moscow, tax fraud? I'm not saying tax fraud is okay. I'm just saying you don't get to start an investigation, spend two years on it, interview 200 witnesses, review 300,000 pages of information, put some guys away for tax fraud and making false statements and pretend you won. But go ahead, feel good about yourself. Keep up the optimism. They tweet all the time about this. So many of Trump's constituents have been indicted. Therefore, Trump will be too. Hashtag, it's smaller time. I say that. It's just so entertaining. Uh, the chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, he's come out recently and said that there's no evidence of collusion. Zero. It does not exist. But, but CNN said. Yeah, CNN also admitted it was all for ratings, you idiot. You have been conned. There's a lot of hesitance now to release this thing. They've been putting it off for a while, but... It's going to be an absolute laughing stock. It's going to be an embarrassment. And they won't have any shame because the left doesn't feel shame. But bring it on. Honestly, make it Mueller time now. I want to laugh even harder than I did when I saw the New York Times election prediction shift from 92% Hillary to 95% Trump. They might actually have something on him, though. Uh, it isn't going to be anything significant, but they'll probably have something on him. They've been at this for a long time. They've had access to every resource imaginable. If they've actually managed to come up with nothing for Trump after all of this, he will have achieved sainthood by my calculation. And I get a lot of emails and DMs. John, you got to talk about the Russia investigation. Or John, you have to debunk the Green New Deal. Do I? Is, is that what we have to go on defense for? It's not even worth our time. Don't even debate those things. Just point, laugh, and then and then just move on. Go get him, Hayden. Today, I'm proud to announce that I will be very soon signing an executive order requiring colleges and universities to support free speech if they want federal research. He brought up Hayden Williams, which who was the kid that was assaulted at UC Berkeley by one of those less tolerant students on the left. And fortunately, an arrest has been made in the case. But this was perfect execution because Trump used this to announce his intention to sign an executive order that would withhold federal research dollars from schools that don't protect the free speech of their students. We're going to have to hold off on the fullest expression of our joy for this one until he actually does it. But still, the fact that he brought this up is fantastic because, as he said, a lot of the students that are being censored and shut down are defending him. And his public acknowledgement of this is going to communicate to his base that he hasn't forgotten about them and that he's willing to defend us since we're willing to defend him as well. We need an immigration policy where people coming into our country can love our country and love our fellow citizens. And this includes shutting down sanctuary cities. President Trump's election was about immigration and nationalism. It wasn't about tax cuts and fiscal conservatism. It was about populism. It was about America first. Not to say that tax cuts and fiscal conservatism are bad, but a lot of the conservatives at CPAC just don't get it. And luckily, our president still does. When he was giving a speech, he called it what it is, which is an invasion of people coming from all sorts of different countries into our country, America. He shut down the open borders advocates, noting that without borders, we don't have a country. And he made a really good case for border security by playing the same morality card that the left uses. The left talks about how badly these poor women and children are treated when they get captured trying to get into our country illegally. And Trump comes back with, yeah, they also get raped on the way over by the coyotes. So maybe let's remove the incentive for them to come over in the first place. And he brought back some of the classics. Immigration policy has to focus on assimilation and it should be merit-based. We have to shut down the sanctuary cities. We have to end catch and release. We have to cancel the visa lottery. I'll tell you what, hearing him say that, it got me fired up. Man. I don't believe that Trump has let us down on immigration. I will not make an assessment of that, of course, until he's out of office. And the fact that he's heading into 2020 stating the importance of immigration shows that he has not given up the fight, which is good because guess what? Immigration is the most important issue. It is the most important issue. We're all fighting this war together. Every contribution helps. Yes, 
of course, socialism is bad. Yes, of course, taxes should be lower. But if we don't fix immigration literally within this administration, Texas goes blue and we're, it's done. It's over. It's the single most important issue. And that's the reason Trump was elected, because he had the balls to bring it into the discussion. The future belongs to those who believe in freedom. I have said it before and I'll say it again. America will never be a socialist country. And of course, President Trump reminds the poor leftists that America will never be a socialist country. They can move to Venezuela. They can move to their precious Nordic countries. Who cares? Just go. And this is great because even though a substantial amount of brainwashing has taken place, Americans still tend to have a negative perception of socialism. So when Trump labels the left as socialist, which it basically is, the left can't deny it because if they do, they're going to piss off their base of socialists. So they're pretty trapped with that one. So with this, President Trump... He's got me fired up again. I'm ready to go. I don't believe that he's going to go down without a fight. The record makes that much clear at least. And, and when we win in 2020, we're going to continue to make America great. And we're going to continue to put the country back on the right track. It's actually amazing to watch. I'm excited. You should be too. This is the best timeline. This is the best timeline. For young people, you don't understand. I, I don't even understand, but I've been told, and I, I agree with this, how great it is to be alive right now. Not only because this is the highest standard of living in human history, Look at what's happening. Donald Trump is president. We're fixing the country. Get excited. This is amazing. <laughs> it's, like this is just fantastic. If you're not if you're not excited, I mean, you know, you can get on some nihilism and be bummed out and uh, I mean this is just fantastic. This is great. That's it. This is just great. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and subscribe if you hadn't already. I got <laughs> I got a little carried away there. Um, I'm just so excited. I mean, I am so excited. You should be, I mean, we, 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 this is a movement. I mean, obviously, like, we know it's a movement, but like, I mean, oh man. Like, it just hits you sometimes. Like, the things that are happening, right, it's, it's just, they, um, it's amazing. It, it is really, it is amazing. But thank you so much for watching, and may God bless America. Uh, Jesus Bobblehead out. This is just, this is amazing.